welcome to Crossroads, which comes to you today from one of the harshest and most unforgiving environment on all of planet Earth, the desert. Blazing sun and scorching heat by day, bitter cold and frigid temperatures at night, biting wind pretty much all the time. Oh, and it's full of stuff that could kill you, like scorpions and snakes. I've been told to watch out for the green ones. Apparently they kill you in like five minutes or something. Also, there's biting ants. There's some just over there. So why am I here? What's in this box? Why are we in the desert? Well, we're here in the desert because I know you are in the desert. How do I know? Well, I've read your mail, like your actual mail, your, all your email. I know from the stories you send me that you find yourself in a place of the desert of purpose where you had dreams, but the dreams have dried up. You had ambitions, but the ambitions have evaporated. All the opportunities are gone. You know, others of you are in a marriage that used to be thriving and incredible. All the joy has just disappeared into the sand. Others of you are apathetic, lonely, bitter. Some of you are just tired of life and all the stuff. We're all in a desert somewhere. The good news, you don't have to stay here. In fact, at Crossroads, we exist to guide you out of the personal desert you find yourself in to the adventurous life that God has made you for. Now, to that end, I've invited my three friends and fellow teaching pastors, Brian, Chuck, and Allie, out here to join me in the desert. I've asked them to give us the strength to stand, the courage to move, and the endurance to last. Now, outside of those three things, they know very little of what's about to happen, like what's inside this box, which should make all this very much fun for us. Here they come right now. Say hello to your cousin. There's my little, there's my little cousin. I'm with you, we're a team. Let's get this stuff out. We can do this. We can do this. I'm... I did not expect this wind, Chuck. I'm not gonna lie to you. Look at my hair. Here's the thing, we need to eat. I believe you're supposed to make him into dinner. Hey! What is going on? Are we ready to play today? You made it. Get in here, Chuck. Hey. You tried all the way from Ohio. <laughs> Are you <laughs> trying to look like a dork? <laughs> well, some, some things I can do effortlessly. Right, so. <laughs> do you want to know why you're here? Yes. yes. I'd love to know why. <laughs> I just need to know. Please tell me no snakes. Oh, uh, lots of snakes, Chuck. Uh, scorpions. Scorpions. Scorpion. Scream, also scorpions. He screams like yes. a girl. Listen, you're here in the desert because our community's in the desert. I know that you guys get the same texts, the same phone calls, the same emails that I do. People are dried up, they are worn out, and they need our help. And that's where you guys come in. You guys are gonna be the guides to get us out of the desert. Here's how this is gonna work. Each of you has the challenge of delivering a powerful, profound, actionable message to get us out. Brian, we need you to give us the strength to stand. Great. Chuck, the courage to move. All right. And Allie, the endurance to last. Okay. To get us all the way out. All in all the time. Awesome. Mm. Now, here's the next part. All of you will be using the same source material, the same section of the Bible, one of the most powerful, profound places in Scripture, a pillar of the entire story of God, the book of Exodus. They were in a desert. Uh, we're in a desert. Uh, we're in a desert. We're in a desert. Wandering Does it make in the sense desert. now? Right? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make we're sense? Wander, Kyle, aren't we? they got out. Well, Some of them, Chuck. Not all of them. It also is 40 Some years. I can't, I can't give you 40 oh, years. Well, here's the thing. It did take 40 years, and most of them didn't actually get most out. Most of them yes. didn't. Your yeah. challenge is to get us out in about 25 minutes apiece and leave none of us behind. No problem. Okay. In. Now, right. here's the last yeah. part. This box. The nation of Israel faced challenges on their journey. Weird things, bizarre things, strange, oh, stop. Strange things. <laughs> Make sure nothing's hissing <laughs> at me from this box. And just like they face challenges, you'll face challenges. Mm. Tasks that you have to complete together to better understand what they went through, help us understand what they went through. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it just sounded like a lot of fun to me, so I just thought I'd make you do it. To you. And, yeah, and to everybody watching as well. Probably not to you guys. So, that's the challenge. Okay. Are you in? In. Yes. In. Okay, awesome. Expecting yes. nothing less. Then, it is time. Open the box. All right. Oh, man. There you go, Allie. Nice. 
Good teamwork already. Here we go. Their enthusiasm yeah. is admirable, but right. we'll see if it lasts once they open the box and start the challenges. Like I said, this should be fun for us. I mean, us. obviously. The Bible. Right. You will need to use that. I... Oh, this is cool. Oh, what? Revelation 20. Oh, the business the end, end doesn't of the seem story. very helpful. I like oh, all this stuff. What in the heck is this? Is that a sex? Who knows? A what? I think it's a sextant. Do not know how to use it, but I think I... Yeah, we have GPSs now. Yes. We have a GPS. Can we use our phones? No. Yeah. no phones. No phones. Okay, so what's this? That, okay, those. Everyone grab one. Yes. You find your name on it. Now, okay. each of you will have a challenge in your message. Okay. Do not open that until you begin your message. So take it out. Whatever it says on the inside, you'll do it. Is there anything else in there? Well, there wait, wait, thing. there is this here. A map. That looks very important. Here, let's hey, uh, all right, put that up here. What do we got? Hold it down. Where's, where's the beginning? You are here. Okay. You are here, in the middle of nowhere. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here it is. First thing is strength to stand, okay. week one. That's right. me. Um, survive the challenge. desert, week one challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're not just preaching, we're actually doing things. While you preach your week one message, Chuck and Allie, you'll go to that location on the map and do the challenge. Mm. Okay. okay. That's okay. how to work every week. All okay. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there is a literal very big crack that we have to go through. There are here. several, yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh -huh. All okay. right. Uh, while these are actual locations on the map, you will notice it's not the scale, and we weren't quite sure about the hundreds of distances. Right so. I mean, there better be some palm trees yeah, around here. Yeah, I agree. Somewhere. Listen, we have full confidence in you. Okay. I think it's time to head out. All right. Well, Brian, why don't you grab your envelope? Let's go. Head off to your location. Chuck and Allie, head off to find challenge number one. Where's my location? I don't know. You got the map. This direction. Map, not the scale. Chuck's got the map. Right. I don't know. Let's okay. go. Talk to him. Let's okay. Go. Thought we made that clear. This is going to be amazing, I think. <laughs> As Chuck and Allie set off to find their challenge, Brian began his strength to stand message by charging up the hill and shouting down the wind, literally. I'm in a wind tunnel right now, and I need the strength to stand. I know from interacting with so many people that if you're anywhere close to normal, your life doesn't measure up to what you wanted it to be. The wind keeps buffeting you in the face, and it's difficult for you to stand, let alone take some ground. What we need is the X factor of the presence of God. He gives us something that we don't have in and of our own natural abilities to be in the midst of a natural windstorm in a dry and arid place. When you get that, you get to become unbreakable. Not shaken, not broken in half, not blown over, but standing tall. That's what we're doing today. I had the strength to stand up on that ridge with that wind blowing, but my vocal cords didn't have the strength to endure. So now we're down in places a little more serene. And the thing that we have right here, the thing you have to do is work in this challenge, Brian. It's time to open this up and see what's inside. All right. Let's see what we got here on our little Indiana Jones satchel. I'll take that. Thank you. This is a story from someone watching right now. They're in a desert in their life, and your job is to teach your message to them and help them get out of the desert. Whenever I get something, I always go to the very end and see who it is. Derek is his name. I also go through emails and th real quick to see if it's negative and going to be cracking on me. Are you? Gonna, I, I do that all the time. I'm going, okay, they're not cracking on me. Here, here's what it says. My wife and I have been going through troubles. We both used to be very religious, but over time walked away. But I wish God would give me guidance. I've been stuck between what I feel God is calling me to and my responsibilities as a husband. How do I find adventure in the day-to-day? -day? What should I do in my marriage? Derek. Okay, Derek, I got you here. Let me just talk about the religion piece first. Religion tries to tell us if we do all these things, then God's going to be okay with us and he's not going to smite us. So go to church, 
do the right things, and magically things are going to be okay. It's kind of a sense of controlling your morality. And there's some good things about that. Great, go to church and control your morality. But that's different than tapping into the X factor of the power of God who can enable you to not just stand in the midst of a difficult marriage or a difficult season in your marriage, but to actually endure, to actually thrive. God makes normal people abnormally strong, but we have to embrace the X factor of the presence of God. Not the rules of religion, but to know and embrace God himself. My experience is that most people don't enjoy their life. Most people are frustrated with their marriage, they're frustrated with their business, they're frustrated with their finances. We can be frustrated with those things and still experience God in the midst of those things and have a different life while loving God. Not loving religion, but loving God. Well, let's talk the rest of our time about Moses, who is one of the iconic leaders in the Bible. This is a guy who had wind buffeting his face year in, year out through different challenges of his life. And he not only stood, but he actually was unbreakable. He is a leader in the nation of Israel. He wrote much of the Old Testament. Jesus himself in Mark chapter 7, verse 10, quotes him. Moses was a Jew at birth, and he's born in this really strange time where the nation of Egypt has their whole country in oppression. And Pharaoh sees that all these Jewish women are having children. He's afraid of a future coup. So he issues a demand to the midwives who are helping the Jewish women deliver. He says, whenever you have a little Jewish boy that comes out of the birth canal, I want you to eliminate that life. When Moses gives birth, when Moses is born rather by his, his mother, that midwife says, I don't wanna do this. I, I can't do this with this little child. Moses' mother nurses him, breastfeeds him, about three months old though. He's a bit large and making fusses and she's gotta get rid of him. And the way she does that, she puts him in a basket, floats him down the river, and down river, whether she knew this or not, we're unsure of, down river is Pharaoh's house and the women of his house are hanging out by the stream one day. They see this basket, they pick up this basket, they see this little baby, and as many women do, oh, I need this child, I need to save this child. And Moses, this little Jewish baby, ends up growing up in Pharaoh's household. Pharaoh probably had a pretty sweet crib on the side of the river. He didn't live in a van down by the river. He would have had an amazing house right there. Moses gets an ideal situation where he's brought up in this amazingly wealthy family and his mother actually enters the picture and actually nurses him as his nursemaid, even though Pharaoh's household doesn't really know this. I, I really identify with this situation because as Moses is adopted and it's amazing that he has a chance at life and in the midst of all these opportunities that Pharaoh's household would have given him, there's still a primal wound. I'm, I'm adopted and most of us who are adopted would understand that there is a primal wound that happens when you are separated from the person that you've been inside of for nine months, you feel alone. You don't, I don't remember this, I don't remember feeling alone. But psychologists would say there was a primal wound where the person who I knew had abandoned me. The person who I knew in my room did an amazingly loving, generous thing by giving me a shot of life. Amazing, amazing, but it was a little creature, you can't reason through that and understand that. But this is why myself and many people who are adopted have a hard time with feeling rejected. We're concerned that people are going to like us. Uh, we sometimes stiff arm people. We stiff arm people before they can stiff arm us. It's sort of a mode of protection to keep ourselves from being hurt again, because we're just trying to stand. Moses, if he's at all like me and others who are adopted, he's just trying to stand, he's just trying to make it through life. But God keeps giving him opportunities and responsibilities that would blow over the normal person, but they don't blow over him. He's actually unbreakable. If you could manufacture the ideal leader in our culture today, that person might not look like Moses, a person who was by nature perhaps immature, 
a person who is separated from their family of origin, but yet those things might have caused him to lean into God and make him be a better man with a better future. It's, it's our difficulties. It's the wind that we have. It's the shots that we take to the mouth that strengthen us and give us the ability to do things that we couldn't do if we just had a fairy tale existence. We have, to, we have to change the way that we see our circumstances to stop feeling bitter about the circumstances I'm in and see our circumstances actually wind that's strengthening us. You might have heard the illustration years and years and years ago. They had what was known as a biosphere when they tried to take plant life inside of a controlled environment of a dome and make the perfect environment. They found that the trees inside of there were bending over. And they thought, why is that? Why are they bending over? They're bending over because there wasn't any wind and trees needed the wind, the pressure of the wind to be strong and to actually stand. Derek, the wind you're feeling right now could actually be the strength that you could receive from God to have a better marriage and a better life. It's weird the way that works, but person after person has found that that is the way that life works. With Brian off to a strong start, let's check in on Chuck and Allie. All right. This, one's the end. this is challenge number one. What do you think's in here? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Looks like we have to get in again. I just wonder if we're going to have to build something. So I not hope fair. not. No. <laughs> Me too. I, that's, we right, are well, not let's see the work. Let's, let's try this. So okay. go ahead and get us in there. I'm sorry in All advance. Right. Oh, no, that's good. I'm going to hammer you. OK. OK, it says. Survive the Desert, week one challenge. In the book of Exodus, the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years in search of the promised land. We have provided you a limited supply of rations, basic navigational tools, okay. and supplies to help you survive. Okay. Please use them to set up camp. Okay. Start a fire. Okay. And make dinner for the group. We can do this. We can do this. I'm so glad you're coming. <laughs> we can do this. Well, this says, wait, wait. Dinner. This is dinner. So we won't do. Oh, oh. There, there's what something the hell in is there. That? That's yeah, all there's you... something alive in there. Okay, so why don't we just leave this here for now? I think dinner goes in there. Kitty tent. Hello, kitty tent. All right. Rusty knife. Oh my. Oh. No. You that's think? Not, no. I, uh, I hope not. I sure hope not. not we got some firewood. Flour. Flour. Okay, so this this reminds me of the manna in the desert. The Israelites were wandering in the desert, so what do they do for food, right? It, right, it, and God provided them yes. manna. Looks right. like we sort of have the same. We do. We have gold medal manna. Packaged up. We have gold medal manna. Straight right? from heaven. Exactly. So we could make something with that. I hope you have a recipe in your head. Yeah. I think we should start with the tent. I do too. So here we go. Oh, man. All right, so let's get this tent going here. There, Little I did state. my part. All right. I'm still not Whoa. quite sure. Oh! Our tent. We lost our tent. Yeah. That's, that's. Did, I did not expect this wind, Chuck. I'm not going to lie to you. It's giving me a whole the new desert, appreciation. You know? Look at my hair. Not off to the best of starts, let's hope things go better for Chuck and Allie and get back to Brian. Life can be incredibly frustrating for us. Let's think about our yearbook. Go way, way back to your high school yearbook or go way, way back to the Facebook posts of your friends when you were in high school. What are some of the dreams that are articulated there? Maybe dreams like, I'm going to be a physician, I'm going to be a surgeon, I'm going to work with inner city schools, I'm going to start a business, I'm going to be an inventor. How many of those things actually come to pass? Very few, which is why many of us are very frustrated with life because the things that we, we thought we would have, we don't have. And then we go into a downward spiral of feeling bad about ourselves and feeling we're constantly playing defense instead of seeing that what we've experienced could be the very wind that's strengthening us for the future. Author Max Locato writes this. Something happens to us along the way. Convictions to change the world downgrade to commitments to pay the bills. Rather than make a difference, we make a salary. 
Rather than look forward, we look back. Rather than look outward, we look inward. And we don't like what we see. I'm hoping you stop looking back. I'm hoping you stop looking inward. People, I've heard people say, all the answers we need are inside of ourselves. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're outside of ourselves. They're forward. That's where God is. God is not trying to give us the past that we wish we had. He's trying to give us a future that we can only have when we have the X factor of Him. You know what? I'm with you. We're a team. Let's get this stuff out. We, we can, we'll just move on to the next thing. We do have fire. wood, so we can do yeah, Let's make a fire. So let's get this. We can make a spark with this. All right. Okay. I'm going to watch while you do that. I like this rope on fire. I'm just going to sit right here. <laughs> There's a spark. Who are we kidding? We're not gonna get this. We didn't start the fire. No, we didn't. And I don't think we can. All right, so we, 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 have, dinner. we have dinner here. This I'm is a, concerning to I, you, I know. I you don't know, hey, really want any part of this. There's a bird in here, you can see it. I just saw an eyeball. Yeah, there's a bird in an here. An eyeball. Is there anything else in here? No, just the one bird, I see you. I, I don't wanna you. hurt it, we're not gonna hurt it. Well, it looks You're like, not hurting this bird. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you that right now. All right, so here we go. Okay, bye we birdie. Oh, oh. Oh, hey. look at it. That is a quail. Scared. Quick, hit the hammer. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we are not hurting this. We're, we're not gonna hurt this. <clears throat> we are not gonna hurt this bird. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Allie. Kyle. How's Hello, it going? Kyle. Would you like to meet my new little friend here? He, excellent. Does he have a name? Oh, um, not yet. Out. Not let yet. We're not sure. Let him out. Okay. Here, put some uh, on. I believe. I no, believe no, you're no. supposed to make him into dinner. Oh no, it's not happening. Okay. Chuck's gonna we'll find just, some other we'll way do, to eat. We'll just do bread. Weren't you? Didn't you also have a shelter? What happened to your shelter? It flew away. Had yeah, past tense. Okay. We had a shelter. Didn't expect the wind out here. Where's your fire at? We're we're getting there. We, we think we could work on that. We, we got think, to, yeah. We think that one I has mean, potential. Like, well, we yeah, could after hours and hours of fire struggle. Why don't you come back oh, to the? Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, you guys. Well, I'd probably catch him. Where did you get that poor thing? He's I'm gone. I'm kind of mad at you right now. You know what? Maybe try the bread. That's all. Remember, we're helping the did people. Did you put the bird in that Remember box? Remember, we're helping the people. I'm not going to confirm or deny that I put the bird in the box. I feel His very name is angry Petey, with you right so now. So just, I would so make I'm the bread. So I'm supposed to get bread? Uh-huh. Get that bird. Here's the thing. We need to eat. So. I know. I understand that God gave the Israelites quail. I do. Uh-huh. They were kind of grumbly about it. You remember Just kind of like right? you and Chuck about this whole thing, right? You got it, Chuck. I'm, Catch that I'm quail. I'm working on it. Kyle? Yeah? I'm not going to kill that quail. I know, Allie. It's not going to happen. I know. I'm working on the manna, but I am not killing a bird. It seems like you and Chuck are finding this challenge very challenging. Sure hope Brian's doing a little bit better. Let's check back in with him. Moses had that X factor, and he needed it as life kept blowing him problem after problem. Strange circumstance after strange circumstance led to him still standing strong, even though sometimes he did run. In the book of Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14, it says this. One day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked upon their burdens, and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together. And he said to the man in the wrong, why do you strike your companion? And he answered, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? And then Moses was afraid and thought, surely this thing is known. Somewhere along the line, Moses comes to recognize that while he's in an Egyptian home, he's actually a Jew. When he finds this out, we don't know when he finds this out, but something primal inside of him comes out when he sees an Egyptian beating one of his own people by birth. 
and he just unleashes pain on him and kills the guy. Next day, similar situation with two Jews and one of them just cracks on him and he realizes, oh no, I've been found out. If Pharaoh and everybody else finds out my family of origin story, I am going to be dead. And so he leaves, he runs away, he's a murderer and he's a fleer. He's in some ways running from his problems. I have a good friend of mine who has got a good bit of resources and his daughter in high school was having a lot of pressure with some of the friends that she had and some of the other things that were going on. And um, uh, I'll call her Sue, even though her real name is Connie. And as he tells me the story, he says to his daughter, Sue, you, you can't run from your problems. When he told me that, I was encouraging him to take his daughter and put her in another school because he had the resources. And I said to him, I said, yes, you can. Yes, you can run from your problems. Sometimes you ought to go to your problems, away from problems, rather than get blown away by all the pain that's coming your way. You can still stand if you can get away from a problem you can't handle in that season. As Moses runs away from his problem right in this area where the Egyptians are, he spends time out in the desert, he gets married, he has a child, and here's what Exodus chapter 2 verse 22 says. She gave birth to a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. Moses ends up giving his son a name that exemplifies his life. Everywhere he's gone, he's been a sojourner. He, he hasn't fit in. He's felt rejected. He's felt like an outsider. He's felt like he, he can barely stand it another day. And yet he is still standing and he is wandering and he is connecting with his God as best that he can. You can feel like an outcast, blown all over the place and yet still stand. The New Testament tells us when he was 40, that's when he was a murderer. So from zero to 40, he was sojourning in an Egyptian home, even though he was a Jew. Then from 40 to 80, he's sojourning in the desert like this, having a child and trying to figure out his next run of life. And then at age of 80, he has another fascinating encounter with God. Now, before I tell you about that encounter that he had, I, I wanna make sure that you and I understand that he had problems, he had difficulty, he had wind that was blowing his face, he had all kinds of obstacles he had to overcome. His life was not easy. He would have never, ever, ever scripted his life to be this way. Nobody would. And life is getting late for him too. It's not like looking back at high school. He's now way later in life, and yet he's still standing and he's still strong. As Brian starts the final push of his message, what he doesn't know is that I'm about to jump in with a question every sane person has to ask. Let's see if he'll have a good answer or get completely tripped up. The last thing I wanna look at in Moses' life comes from Exodus chapter three, verse one to five. Here's what it says. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out in the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. And then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Moses is in a whoa, dry... Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. This story's getting a little crazy, okay? Uh, are sane people really supposed to believe that God talked to a guy out of a bush that's on fire? Uh... Yes, I'm gonna explain it in just a moment. Maybe they'll understand if you don't interrupt me the wrong place. But if, if, we, if we're to expect that there is a God who is real, has an X factor of power, we should expect X power, unusual events to happen from time to time. Uh. Moses experienced them. I want more of us to experience them every once in a while. Great answer. Okay, keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay, 
So he's out in this dry, arid, humid environment. Wind is blowing, all kind of stuff is happening. He's just doing his chores one day and he sees way off in the distance a bush that's burning. Now it's interesting here that he might have seen bushes burning a number of times because in dry, arid environments, it happens. But this one keeps burning. It's burning and the bush isn't consumed. That's what catches his eye, not the fire, but that it's not going out. Like a little bush, or it was a huge bush, we don't know what it was, but it just kept going and going. He said something unusual is happening here. When you want God to break into your life, bring you an X factor, give you the ability to stand, there's a number of things that Moses does in this story that you and I need to do. Derek, this is for you. One, turn the noise off. When Moses came into an environment like this, he didn't have the same distractions he would have had elsewhere. He had time to think, he had time to pray, he had time to process. We need to stop being so stimulated in our lives that God can't stimulate us. He can't break through the clutter. We've got to get to places that are calm and quiet to actually hear and sense the presence of God. Number two, take his shoes off. God tells him to take his shoes off because the place where he's standing is holy ground. Not that, not that that dirt itself was more special than the dirt a mile away, but it's special because God is there. The carpet in a church isn't any more holy than the carpet in your home unless you're hearing from God in that church, in that building, or in your home. And we need to recognize that when God does break through, and he might be breaking through to you, Derek, or anybody else here right now, when he breaks through, you gotta recognize this is really important. This is a special, sacred moment. Soak in what you're sensing, what you're feeling, and recognize that the calmness that you're having or the ideas that you're having or the newfound resilience that you're having is actually the presence and the gift of God. It is the X factor. And number three, take off on an adventure. Moses doesn't just have a little kumbaya circle with God that's a nice thing to have in your memory book. He is getting equipped and motivated for his next adventure. And adventures are not climbing these mountains, though that may be adventuresome. The adventures that are most important to you are the adventure that Derek has. How do I keep my marriage going? The adventure of how do I live on my meager resources I have right now? The adventure of how do I break chemical addiction? The adventure of how do I break my pornography fixation? The adventure of how do I find the right employer that's going to meet my needs and get me to a new place? These are the adventures that will define your life and where you can encounter God in the midst of those. You might actually have more in common with Moses than you think of. You're never going to write parts of the Bible. You may never encounter a bush that is burning and you've never seen it consumed. But if you've ever felt like you are alone, that you can barely stand, that wind is blowing you down, you and I can be like Moses and we can have the strength to stand. We can be used in powerful ways, but you have to believe that. You have to believe that you're not just a powerless slave that's blown all over the place, that you're a very child of God and He has a purpose for you. He has dreams for you, and you're not gonna know those dreams maybe or the fullness of them for some time in the future, but where you are right now, you can stand. You can stand and you will say, I will be different. I will hear, I will listen, I will notice, and when it's ready, I will go. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 says that he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases his strength. There is one who can increase your strength even when you feel that you are about to faint. He has done it with Moses. He's done it with me in my life. And he's done it with countless others who are just normal Joes and Joannes who didn't think they could take another punch, and yet they did because of the X factor of the power of God. Stop the excuses. 
Stop thinking you can't do it. Stop thinking that if only you had this or if only you could see that or if only I could be Moses. You're not Moses. You're not going to have the experience. Stop the excuses. Stand where you are. It will pass. And God will use you and you will sense him in a powerful way if you just stand. Let me pray for you right now. God, I'm thankful that you use normal people like Moses and like Derek, like me and like everybody else who's with us today. God, we, we need this. And we needed this noise to be turned off and the wind to come down. And we needed to have a clarity about our future. I believe you've given us that to today. We're not just going to stand, we're going to walk into it. And I pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, we're not going to starve our first night in the desert. What happened to the bread, guys? I'm kind of proud of that. I think so. Flour. Hey, guys. Hey, what are we doing? What's up, man? Well, you know, we, uh, we lost our shelter. Tip yep, flew away. Yep, you did a shelter? Yep. We did, but... We did. We got it up, but the wind took it. Yep. Uh -huh. But we got, we got we quail. We did make dinner. Just like the Israelites in the story of Exodus. Didn't we got rotisserie quail. Just we like made they had. quail. Turn the man the bread. You, you made that. Rotisserie quail. Yeah. yeah. Because it looks like it's cooked, but I don't see any remnants of an actual fire here. Well, <laughs> oh, well, you know. Well, for safety reasons. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely didn't just come prepared from the crew. I mean, that didn't happen. So it got cooked. I don't, I don't really know if that's exactly what a quail would look like, even. It's a, it was a big you one. You don't know what a quail looks like. I know it doesn't look like <laughs> that. I've gone, I've gone like. quail hunting. <laughs> Have you gone quail hunting? No. What is scratching around in there? Get that's noisy. Oh, there's nothing in that box. Nothing. Nothing. Don't worry about that. I can hear that. something. You guys, scratching. you didn't leave it in the box, did you? What? Did you leave it in the box? Dinner. Oh. I heard it. Uh, it, uh, there's something alive in here. <laughs> oh, Whoa! Look at that! Oh. Come here, little boy, a little girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. There Come it here. is. That's. Oh, there you go. Hello? Say hello to your cousin. There's my, <laughs> little, there's my little cousin. That's what that's what you would have looked like, except smaller. If someone knew how it. to make a fire. Don't and hurt how, it. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. All right. All right. You get a reprieve today. You had strength to stand. <laughs> strength to stand. I hope today you found a piece of the strength to stand. That's why this channel exists, to guide you to the adventurous life that God made you for. Make sure you don't miss any of our new videos that come out. Hit the subscribe button right here. We'll see you next week.